Let's take a closer look at the TVC Luke Skywalker Jedi Academy action figure. Villa Veracino, living the Star Wars life. Hello there, and thanks for visiting the Villa Veracino YouTube channel. Today I have a new arrival to take a closer look and unbox. Here we have the Vintage Collection or TVC Luke Skywalker 3.75 action figure. As you can see by that bright red logo, this is from the Book of Boba Fett series. So we can see this Luke Skywalker version is labeled as Jedi Academy. So this is really cool. This is a brand new find for us here in New Zealand. This is the only one of this figure that we've been able to find on store shelves locally. So I was very, very excited to be able to spot him in the wild. Of course, we had to grab him and bring him home. Very, very keen to open him up and take a closer look. It's been a while since we've had a Book of Boba Fett figure to open here. So this is really exciting. So before I take him off the backing card and take a closer look at the action figure, just going to take a look at this really cool vintage style backing card and packaging. So of course we get that really cool bright red Book of Boba Fett logo there up the top. We have green for Luke's background figure color and sort of title plaque here. Perfect color for Luke, of course, that is the green of his lightsaber. So we can see Luke Skywalker, Jedi Academy. And we can see by the art here, we have Luke as he appears in the show, looking just so eerily like young Mark Hamill there, of course. We know this was filmed only a couple of years ago, using a mix of techniques to create a young Luke there. But I think that art on that card just looks absolutely amazing. And we can see Grogu in the little Jedi training backpack there, which is really quite cute. Yeah, and of course we've got that classic Kenner logo there down the bottom. I love the strong green and red. We've got that green background, green colors for the figure and the title. A little bit of green here with that backpack and Grogu. It's a really standout card, immediately caught my eye on the store shelf. So on the back, we can see some of the other figures from this assortment. We can see we have Grand Admiral Thrawn, Morgan Elspeth, Grand Inquisitor, Ahsoka Tano, Moff Jurgerod, Luke Skywalker Jedi Academy, Boba Fett Tuscan version, and HK-87 Assassin Droid. Standard copyright text taking up the whole bottom there. And this one is VC298. So we're getting quite a way through that numbering there. So pretty standard back of the vintage collection cards these days with that chrome racetrack circling some of the other figures available so there we go cool card great addition if you like to keep them carded but this one's going to be opened so let's carefully remove this bubble and take a closer look at the figure inside so now i have the luke skywalker action figure off the backing card so we can take a closer look at all of the details so in his packaging he also came with a tiny little lightsaber hilt that has a pig there for attaching to his belt nice detail reasonably well painted it's mostly silver with some small details there you can see black and a little bit of gold there and then we have the lit lightsaber version, which has a nice green blade, nice and straight. So the hilt actually sort of feels quite different to me than the lit one. This one has a very skinny section. You can kind of see it there. This one does not have quite as a skinnier section because I get the feeling that green blade goes all the way through. So it doesn't narrow quite as much as this little hilt version does, which is kind of interesting when you really sort of compare them. They're very different lengths as well. You can kind of see if I'm like trying to hold, maybe if I hold it like that, you can kind of see the hilt version is just a little bit longer if I try and sort of put them really close up together, which I think is kind of interesting. That one's longer. But, and kind of different silver paints as well something about this one looks a little bit more shinier than this one this one looks a little bit more like silver plastic <laughs> but nevertheless still tidy still good accessories for a luke skywalker action figure so first things first this luke has a soft goods component 
which is, you know, kind of a little bit different for him. Because, of course, at first glance, he may look very similar to Luke Skywalker from Return of the Jedi, wearing all black with a black glove. As he appears in the Book of Boba Fett, his outfit is different, heavily inspired by his outfit in Return of the Jedi, of course. But we can see here, this isn't a jacket. This is almost like a black Jedi tunic. This is, of course, the Jedi Academy version of Luke. So we can see that he has that sort of crossover, sort of like a karate tunic style that the Jedi mostly wear. And then instead of his classic black belt with silver buckle here on the front, we have depicted in plastic. It's kind of like a fabric sash because we've got these bits trailing down the side. And then we have the soft goods component to kind of finish off that sort of tunic there. So I think that that's really fun. You know, sort of at first glance, you're like, oh, it's just a look. But there is quite a few differences there. So I think that's really cool. Of course, he's still wearing boots, black pants. He's still got that black glove. And, you know, from a few angles, it does look very similar. But I do want to add him to my Book of Boba Fett collection. So those differences and that fabulous backing card definitely made this one grab my attention. So let's take a closer look at the details. So Luke can be one of those tricky ones in terms of face sculpts. Some actors, their faces just don't sort of portray well in plastic. And unfortunately, there are some bad sculpts of Luke Skywalker over the years. This one, I have to say, is actually one of my sort of, in personal opinion, one of the better ones out there. He's not ridiculously blonde. I think this is a pretty good hair color. You know, not a dark brown, but I think that that is a pretty good likeness, especially if I hold it up sort of next to the, the backing card there. I don't think that's a bad color for Luke as he appears in the, this series. And I do think that the, the sculpting and the paint on the face, there are some really fine details. I like the paintwork around the eyes. I do think it's actually really giving me Luke Skywalker. I think that's quite nice there. We can see that the hair is added on. This isn't all sculpted as one piece. There is just a sort of a really fine undercut around the edges. So the face and the hair are two pieces adhered together. And we can see that sort of join around under the jawline and chin. That is where we're going to get some articulation in there. So already I'm liking this figure a lot. Okay. So let's test out some of the articulation on the arms because there's not too much detail here on the chest and I'm just going to move the arms out of the way so we can take a look at some of those other details. So we can see we've got a unencumbered shoulder joint here. So there's not going to be sort of anything at the top that's really going to stop us apart from just physics. We can get his arms up pretty high there. And again on the other side we've got sculpted elbows. All these feel quite nice and then we've got a little bit of some wrist movement here so I actually really like the joins on his wrist sorry I'm looking at it close up um, sometimes you see sort of like the hinge on like the back of the hand this one it's kind of really well hidden I don't sort of see the joins much apart from at the end of his sleeve and we can kind of see that a little bit here. I know it's black on black. We don't see the sort of the hinge coming into the back of his hand. It just mostly just turns, which is generally all the kind of articulation I'm really looking for in a hand component there. We can see that his hands look like they are just a good classic lightsaber grip on both sides. Sometimes the figures, they give them like a trigger finger on their right hand even though you may not necessarily pose them with a blaster so I'm glad that Luke doesn't have that certainly in Jedi Academy I don't think he would be uh, firing a blaster there he's going to use a lightsaber all the force so I like those hand sculpts there perfect for lightsaber poses so now that I can put his arms out of the way we can take a closer look at this skirt and sash detail which I think is quite nice. Again, it's a slightly more matte black texture and finish to the belt. So there's a little bit of a difference to that slightly more sort of semi-gloss for the tunic at the top. 
So hopefully that's showing up on camera. You can kind of see it's got a little bit of a different finish. And then of course we move down to the sort of lower tunic skirt. Now this feels like the kind of polyester fabric I have seen used on a lot of Hasbro Star Wars figures. This feels like the same sort of fabric that I've seen on, you know, skirts and cloaks and things like that. It's the kind of fabric and you can just kind of see in certain sections where it looks just like a tiny bit jagged. Uh, this kind of fabric, if you sort of pull it like that, you will ladder it or potentially damage the, the uh, edging of it. So I'm definitely one to not sort of stretch it side to side when it has a raw hem. We can see it has a stitched seam down the sides so that it is shaped over his hips. But because of that hem, I'm generally not going to be like stretching his legs out wide and potentially making this a little bit more of a stretched out skirt shape rather than following the lines of his hips as a tunic would. So I'm not going to test his hips too widely and I don't really want to pull this up as well because that raw hem is going to be a little bit of an issue if you're playing with your figure in some wild poses. But generally speaking, from what I can feel, We've got some pretty good articulation there for some poses. He does not have, that I can see, maybe he does? No, that doesn't feel like, oh, oh, it's very tight. Okay, there is a line here at the top of the thighs. It's very tight, but I can get some side rotation on his thighs. Very tight though. I can just kind of get that in there, so yes. There is some, see I'm getting little bits of fluff off it already. Um, so we can do some interesting sort of uh, movement there with that upper thigh join. I like the fact that his knees are hidden in the sculpting of his pants. Sort of comes down, so if I bend his knees, it's going to be a little bit more hidden from the front, which is always nice. Got that sort of pants sculpting coming down like that. I know his arms are in a little bit of a weird position. And then we've got sort of classic ankle joins and sort of the bottom of his boots there. So these are always a little bit tricky. He has incredibly tight ankle joins there. Sorry, I've got little bits of black fluff on my hands from that skirt. I'm really trying not to feather that out. His feet are really tight, especially this one. That takes a fair amount of work to get that. Thankfully that sort of snapped back in because I'm hoping that he's not going to be too hard. I did have him standing on the desk before but he just feels like yeah I'm hoping he's not too hard to stand up when I get him into some poses because while he's standing here his feet don't look perfectly flat but flat enough so that he can pose well. So I didn't actually see now that I'm thinking about it, because this isn't like a leather belt, I don't see where that lightsaber hilt would go, to be honest. <laughs> I don't see a hole in his belt like I would normally see on, say, like Darth Vader or some of the other ones. So I wonder why there is such a large peg on this. Am I missing something? I don't see where it would go. Do they, if they just use that as a sculpt from something else. Like just reuse the same lightsaber component from a Return of the Jedi Luke. I'll have to have a look at that because there is nowhere to actually put that. I just don't know why it has that peg. Because it doesn't go anywhere. Maybe that's just Hasbro tripping me up by reusing a part. Okay. So, I'm going to put the lit saber in his hand. It's, it's fairly nice and smooth. This should hopefully go into his hand easily. There we go. I'll get him into a little bit more of a classic lightsaber pose. Let's see how well he can stand. Oh, yes, he can. Oh, oh, sorry, I forgot. He can move at the waist. It's kind of a clicky movement, but he does hold it, despite the fact that it looks a little odd when he's sort of twisted really strongly at the waist. Um, 
but I like that he holds it. Sometimes you can sort of pull figures around and they immediately want to snap back to middle, but I can actually get a little bit of turning there, which doesn't actually look too bad on him because it's a bit more of just sort of a subtle torso movement. It actually looks really nice. Yeah, so he doesn't come with a lot of accessories and it's kind of funny that sometimes those hero characters ends up being the characters that end up sort of living on the store pegs for a long time. But I do really like this figure. I think it is a good repre representation of young Luke looking like young Mark Hamill here from the Book of Boba Fett. I like that he's fairly sturdy. <laughs> As I say that he wants to pull over. Um, I think he can hold some pretty good poses. I think the use of soft goods here is really interesting. And I'm hoping that I can, you know, recreate a really cool scene with Grogu and Ahsoka from that episode in the Book of Boba Fett. I think he looks really good and I'm really happy with that face detail. I think Hasbro is finally getting Luke Skywalker's face right. I really like that. And good color green for his lightsaber too. Very tranquil for his Jedi training, I think. Looks really nice. I'm really happy with this figure. Not a huge amount of detail, but then that's not really Hasbro's fault. That's going to come from the costume design largely. He doesn't have tabards or in much other sort of detail there. I think it's just designed to be rather slimline. This is his, you know, comfortable workout gear. And, you know, as we see in some of the scenes, he has that backpack on for carrying Grogu. So he's not going to have a lot of bulk here. Overall, I'm really happy. He holds the lightsaber well. I can get some cool poses. I like the sculpting of his face. Overall, a simple yet effective character figure from the TVC line. I'm very happy. Very excited. I've only ever seen this once. So I hope to see more stocks of this figure available locally. I think it is a really good figure and I hope everyone that wants to be able to add it to the collection can find him. So there you have it. That was my closer look at the Luke Skywalker Jedi Academy TVC 3.75 inch action figure. Very excited to find this one locally and add it to my collection. Let me know what you think about this particular figure in the comments below. Do check out our other videos for more Star Wars unboxings, including more figures from the Star Wars TVC line, Black Series, Funko, and lots, lots more. Catch you on the next video, and as always, may the Force be with you. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like, check out our other videos, and subscribe for alerts about new uploads. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.